Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying tutorial I'm going to show you how to tie a really neat tan caddis. Stay tuned. Let's start tying this tan caddis. In my Stonfo came in vice, I have a hook from Allen Fly Fishing. They're D103BL. It's a dry fly, light wire hook. The BL designation stands for barbless. I'm tying this today in a size 14, though I'll typically tie this anywhere between a size 12 the whole way down to a size 20. We're first going to establish a thread base. I'm using A dot uni thread, the color's tan. I'm going to bring this the whole way back to above where the barb would be. Next, I'm going to grab a little bit of my favorite tan dubbing. We're going to create a little dubbing noodle on our thread so that it tapers up towards the thorax. We want that taper gradually building as we move in that direction towards the eye of the hook. Okay, I think we have a little bit too much on there. Let me back this off a little bit and tighten that up. Okay, at this point now we can add our underwing slash legs. And that's going to be just a CDC feather. I've selected one that's similar to a puff in that the stem of this fiber is almost invisible in a sense. It seems like it's actually hanging a little bit lower than a normal stem on a feather, thereby allowing all these fibers to kind of flow a little bit more natural. I'm going to be placing this over the top of the hook. And once I have it tied in place, those CDC fibers are going to just be able to move all over the place, simulating that wing from underneath, but also simulating the caddis legs. Now, to measure this, we want this extending just a little bit past the bend of the hook. Once we have it there, we can just switch fingers and lock it in place, wrapping back. Let's get rid of the butt section of this feather. All right, once we have that out of there, we're next going to add our wing material. And I'm using a really cool wing material today. This is called Caddis Wings. I got this from frostyfly.com. I definitely recommend this material. What's cool about this is you can read all this stuff about them. It's all those great things. It comes in all of these great colors. But if you look the size on this packaging, small, medium, large are all checked off. And here's why. When you get this material, you get a sheet of these wings. There's a bunch of them on here and it comes in different sizes. So you can simply just peel off the size you want, fold them in half, and tie them on to your pattern. So I have a set right here. I've already folded them in half. To, I've already made sure that they're going to fit this size hook. And I basically just want to make it so that the point of that material is nearly butted up to that eye. And that's it. Now they're locked in place. I actually prefer to go over them a little bit with thread first. Then I'm just going to add a little bit more dubbing to this. And we're going to cover the front of the thorax and the head. All right, once we have everything in place, we can go straight to our whip finish. and complete this fly. This is definitely a fly with very few materials and it's a simple one to tie yet it's an effective one on the water. With that winging material we can create a really great profile. It has some perfect tenning yet it also allows for those CDC legs to just move around and breathe once they hit the water. Once I have this fly typically tied as it is right now I'll actually lift that wing material up and push those CDC legs out because I want them just flowing all over the place. Then I'll push the wing material back down. And that's exactly how I'll fish this fly. So now that you've seen me tie it, let me change the camera angle and I'll tell you a little bit more about this tan caddis. 
Now that we're finished tying that pattern, I hope you can agree with me that that's a really fast and simple one to crank out at your vise. Now let's kind of continue with the fly tying perspective of this for a little bit and talk about the versatility of the fly. For starters, there's a couple different things that we can do to really cover our bases during a caddis fly hatch. At the beginning of the hatch, sometimes those fish will be keyed in on the emerger stage of a caddis fly. And to basically turn this fly into that is really simple. Right before we dub the body, all you have to do is add in a little bit of antron or zelon, and that's going to imitate a trailing shuck. You'll have that antron or zelon go a little bit past where you had the CDC tips end. So think about kind of that location. And it's really simple because that's the only change you have to make to this fly. The beauty about having that antron or zelon on as a trailing shuck is that when those fish are keyed in on that shuck, you'll have a fly for it. But as those fish transition to the adult caddis fly, all you have to do is simply just cut off that trailing shuck and you can continue to fish that pattern, hopefully with success. Which really is an important thing to keep in mind. This fly affords you that versatility, especially on the stream. And if there's other patterns out there that you can basically remove materials while you're on the water and continue to fish them, then by all means, add those flies to your boxes because they are great ones to have, especially when you're out fishing. Another easy change that we can make to this pattern is by simply changing the color. I'll carry this in brown, tan, cinnamon, and black in my boxes in a variety of different sizes. And I can basically match all the different hatches that I'm going to come across in my area. So do a little bit of research on the caddis flies on the rivers and streams and possibly lakes where you fish and tie this pattern in those colors. Now the beauty of this fly and the reason we can crank it out so fast is because of those caddis wings that I got at frostyfly.com. They are really simple to just pull away, peel off that little pad, fold them and lock them in place. This is a fly that's very similar to an elk hair or deer hair caddis or that X caddis that I referenced earlier, yet it's so much faster to tie because of that wing. Now that wing is a great one, especially in those slow to mid currents. I don't like to fish this pattern in really heavy water because it goes a little bit flatter on the water. It's a little bit lower and it's a little tougher to see. But on those slower currents and even those middle currents, we'll say style of pulls, I love to fish this fly because of that profile that that wing provides it. It's just a great profile for those fish to see as they're looking up. It shades and kind of tents over the entire pattern and it doesn't really bulk up the head. And that's a great thing to keep in mind, which is why I recommend that product. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the fishing aspect of this. I will fish this pattern before, during, and a little bit after the hatch, though I typically won't hang another fly off of it, just because I don't look at this as a fly that's meant to suspend others. I primarily fish it by itself. I've talked a little bit about the water where I fish it, and this is also a fly that I'll add a little bit of dry fly float into occasionally, but the combination of that CDC and the caddis wing really help to keep this pattern afloat. So with all that said, I really do hope that you enjoyed the tying of this pattern. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below, or you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. I'd like to reach out to all of you and ask you, aside from that elk hair, deer hair, X caddis, and this tan caddis variation that I showed you today, what other caddis imitations do you prefer to fish during the caddis fly hatch? I'd really love to hear from all of you just to see and, and get some other perspectives on some of your favorite flies out there. Well, speaking of other fly tying tutorials, if you'd like to watch some other ones, including some on fly fishing, check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. I also have a Facebook page, and if you like that, you'll receive some regular fly tying and fly fishing updates. Well, with all of that said, once again, everyone, I really do appreciate the view and hope you enjoyed the viewing of this guide style fly as part of my two minute tying series, the Tan Caddis with a little variation. Thanks.